Let's talk about what I've read lately. Hi, I'm Alex, this is Books and Paperbacks, and welcome back to another video. I thought that I filmed a recent reads recently, but the last time I did was in June, so I owe you this video. However, it's taken this long because I just didn't have anything to share. Nowadays, most of the books that I read are in my reading vlogs and I don't share them in depth in my wrap-ups. So I actually have three books that I've read outside of reading vlogs, but I will also be talking about the books that I've mentioned in reading vlogs just to let you know about them. But again, I won't be going into depth because there's videos for that. So without further ado, let's get started. I have gained a lot of people over the last couple months, so if you're new here, hi, welcome, thanks for stopping by. In my videos, you may notice that I don't give star ratings. About a couple years ago, I stopped doing that, and so I just review books. In every video, that's how it is, and recent reads and wrap-ups are no different. So I will just be reviewing the books in this video. Starting with July, where I read two books. I was so burned out in July and August. You will see a pattern of that where I just was not picking up anything, and you probably saw that in my content as well. I was so burned out from work, from reading, from everything, and so I read two books, which is still good that I even picked anything up. Firstly is The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Trifer, which I've already mentioned in a video. I mentioned it in my fall book recs video, and I loved this book. I did read it for a vlog, which will be coming hopefully the end of November, early December, where I just catch up on my reading goals, and I read this for a specific prompt for the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, so you will see my initial reactions as I read this book. This is a queer YA sci-fi thriller following two boys who are on a spaceship and they don't know how they got there. Their memory is a race, and the whole story is them trying to find out why they're on there, and they're told that they're trying to save one of the characters sister. And it is so fun and intense. The only thing I can compare it to is Among Us. And I say that only because they are doing tasks on this spaceship. All I could think about was Among Us. <laughs> the rumors are true. I am in my sci-fi era. I'm learning that I like sci-fi when it's in these controlled environments and genres that I already like. Thrillers are something that I enjoy. And so this was really fun, especially just trying to learn what happened. I loved this book and I cannot wait for you to see the vlog where I share all of my reactions because it was a wild time. In July, I also started reading for my video where I tested one-star book reviews. That will be linked down below and up in the cards if you want to go and watch it. I had so much fun filming that video. I found some one-star book reviews that I thought were funny and I read books for them, including Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Definitely go and watch that video to hear my full thoughts, but this book is so controversial and I had no idea. That was everything for July. Now moving on to August where I read three books. Another book that I mentioned in that fall book recs video is Barrier Gaze by Chuck Tingle. This was so good. It's a horror about the barrier gaze trope, homophobia, and Hollywood killing off gay characters. We're following Misha, who is a filmmaker, and he is so happy to have been nominated for an Oscar. He feels like everything is finally paying off. But at the same time, the executives on his long-running streaming series tell him to kill off his gay characters for the algorithm. And he is pissed off. But what happens next will shock you, because the characters end up coming to life. And that is terrifying. This was so gory. It was so fun. And I listened to it on audiobook, which is narrated by a ton of horror authors, including T. Kingfisher, Stephen Graham Jones, Sarah Gailey, and more. As much as I loved this book, and it's gonna be in my best books of the year, I was really disappointed to see T.J. Klune included in the narrators because he wrote the House on the Cerulean Sea, inspired by the 60s scoop. And for that, I do not support him. I've never read his books. And I just was really uncomfortable and disappointed to see him even included, especially along with Indigenous authors. I 
Ugh, I hated that. But overall, I really enjoyed it. But like I said, I loved this book. And I really liked the inclusion of the different authors as narrators. This was such a fun audiobook. And if you like horror, I highly recommend this. The next book was for that video where I tested one star book reviews. And this was Bored Gay Werewolf. It was interesting. <laughs> You'll see my thoughts in that vlog. But as somebody who does not like to read about werewolves, this was interesting because it was satirical. It was interesting. So go watch that vlog to know my full thoughts. The last book I read for this vlog was Kissing the Coronavirus. I don't know how I forgot about that, but maybe it's just because I've blocked it out of my memory. So if you want to go and watch me read this, there is a whole reaction part. So go and watch that video. Next, I read Flamer by Mike Carrado. This was a graphic novel for my video where I read the most banned books in America. This was so incredible. I am so glad I read this. Huge trigger warnings for homophobia, self-harm, and suicide attempt. I felt so seen in this book, and I was so upset to hear that somebody would want to ban it. It is so good. So go and watch that video to hear my full thoughts. And in that video, I included a little snippet of a clip from NPR's Code Switch. They did an episode with the author and he just talks about the disservice of his book being banned. So definitely go and watch that video because it's really important to know about banned books and I really enjoyed filming that. Speaking about banned books, we're moving over to September now where I read the final books for the banned books video. Let's Talk About It was a graphic novel all about sex, relationships, sexuality, gender, things like that. And last, I read the novel Lawn Boy, which was actually banned in my county. I enjoyed that one as well. There are some critiques I had with it, but overall I liked it. It is about a boy who knows that he is gay, but was shamed for it. So it really talks about coming into your sexuality after having internalized homophobia and also living in an area where it's not accepted and you cannot explore your sexuality. There is a lot of talk about masculinity. So like I said, if you want to know more about those books, go and watch that video because I had a lot of fun making it and I spent a lot of time on it. <laughs> and last is October where I read seven books. I was on my reading game way more in October. I filmed two reading vlogs in a book haul, I believe. I participated in Black Aween and TBR Harvest. My first reading vlog of the month was reading for Black Aween, where I read A Cozy Mystery, Wed, Red, and Dead by VM Burns, which I was very disappointed by. It was confusing. There was a lot going on that I was so confused about. But then I read It's Elementary by Elise Bryant, which I devoured. I loved this book so much. I know I would, but it was so fun to read. This was about Mavis, a single black mother who drops her kid off at an elementary school and she ends up getting roped in with the PTA. But while she's walking her dog one night by the school, she sees Trisha in the parking lot. She's the PTA president and she's wearing rubber gloves, which isn't that weird until the next day day, the principal doesn't show up. And it is so intense and fun and funny. It talks about parenting and there's a little romance that I really enjoyed between Mavis and the school psychologist. It was so fun. I highly recommend it if you're looking to read a cozy mystery, but it also has layers and talks about book banning and social issues. I really loved this book and I'm so glad I finally got around to it. As I mentioned, I participated in a readathon called TBR Harvest, which was created by Leandra the TBR Zero and it was really fun. So I had the trick or treat board where you just read books based on the prompts and you pick up items. So I wanted to get the pumpkin and I didn't have anything that had a pumpkin on the cover. So I went on Hoopla and I found a middle grade Mara Khan and the Spectacular Fall Festival by Sadia Faruqi. I read the first book in this series I think like last year or something like that. It is Mara Khan and the Henna Party, which I really enjoyed. So once I saw this, I was like, you know what? This will be short, let me pick it up. And I did. This is book three in the series and it's following Mara who is in her elementary school class. I believe it's third grade. And they are given a task 
to create an activity for the fall festival coming up, and the student that sells the most tickets gets a prize. And it's hilarious because, you know kids, they just hear prize and they're like, I want to do it. Sadia does such a great job with the voice of Mara because she hears prize and she's like, okay, I want to win that. But she doesn't even know what the prize is and keeps mentioning this. She's like, I don't even know what the prize is going to be. Is it going to be something extravagant? Is it going to be pizza? Is it going to be this? And she just wants to get the prize. She doesn't care what it is. Maria learns teamwork, leadership, and problem solving in this book as she and her class come together to create this activity. I was so glad to read some middle grade this month because I was reading a lot of different things, especially cozy mysteries and horror and some things that might have just not been that light, so it was nice to have a little palette cleanser. And Maria is so funny and sassy. I really love Sadia Faruqi's writing, and I'm glad I was able to read this series again. Then, to end out the month, I read Creepy Queer Books for a reading vlog, which I posted on Halloween. I read a bunch of different things. I also forgot to mention in that vlog that the reason I haven't been using the word that everybody's been using to talk about Halloween season, the SP word, is because Jesse from Jesse on YouTube mentioned over on Instagram in 2023 about the origins of that and how it is a slur, so I've stopped using it. I'll link their video down below for more context, so if you just don't know why I'm using creepy or just not using that word at all, that's why, so apologies for not putting that in the reading vlog. It totally slipped my mind, honestly. I wanted to talk about it, and then I just totally forgot to, so I'm doing it here. But in that vlog, I read a Sleepy Hollow retelling called Splinter by Jasper Hyde, and I read this author before. I've read their work as Georgina Kirsten, and I bought Splinter last year when it came out, and so this was the perfect opportunity to read it. There's demisexual rep, it's the Headless Horseman, there is a cast of BIPOC characters and a lot of Black characters. I forgot to point this out in the vlog, but this is a modern retelling, which I didn't even know that going into it. I was a little confused because they did have their phones on them. And this is one thing I have a gripe with about mystery novels, especially set in the 21st century, because they'll be like, I don't know, I can't find them. What do we do? And I'm like, you have Google. I'm like, you have a phone and I'm sure you could probably find out in five minutes because they went to the library and they were sleuthing and looking through things, which totally cool. But I was like, can't you just like go home and go on your computer and look everything up? And that was what had confused me because I was like, wait, maybe this isn't the 21st century. But then they were talking about having their phones and there were some talk about things that were modern, but they did mention COVID, so that was actually what gave me the indicator that this was 2023. <laughs> but I would have liked a little bit more clarity on that. My camera died, so let's properly finish out this video. I was last talking about Splinter, which I really enjoyed. If I didn't say it already, it has demisexual rep. There is a whole cast of BIPOC characters, especially Black characters. Our love interest, Echabod, is demisexual, and he is also Filipino. Like I've said, Georgina Kirsten is one of my favorite indie authors, so I'm glad that I was able to read them under Jasper Hyde. I highly recommend them if if you are looking to read more indie. They have a novella that I've read called Fall Into You if you're craving some more fall vibes and you want a sweet sapphic romance, or if you want a dark story like this and you love Sleepy Hollow, I really enjoyed Splinter. And if you want to know my full thoughts, you can go and watch that vlog. Speaking of that vlog, I also read a middle grade called The Cookie Crumbles by Alicia Dow and Tracy Badua. I read this on audio. We're following two best friends, Layla and Lucy. Layla loves to bake and Lucy loves to write. She is a journalist and she likes to write for the school paper. It's the summer before eighth grade and they find out that they're not going to be going to the same high school because they live in different parts of the town. And there's a cutoff. My district is the same way where if you 
live on one side, you go to one high school, and if you live on the other side, you go to a different high school. That's their dilemma right now. They're heartbroken over this because they've been going to school together since kindergarten. But when Layla is invited to Sutherland Academy to participate in their golden cookie competition. She immediately says yes because they have an elite culinary track as well as journalism for Lucy. Lucy is able to tag along and write about the event for the paper and also to hopefully get admission into the school. But during the competition, one of the judges who I deemed as a fictional version of Gordon Ramsay. His name's Remy and he's British and he's an angry man. Who else could it have been? <laughs> he ends up getting sick and has to go to the hospital and can't judge the competition anymore. So Lucy thinks this is the big story. So she decides to try and investigate along with some of the other contestants. I believe this was both authors middle grade debut and I think they did a great job. Hi. I spread some misinformation, so let's clear it up really quick. Thanks to Alicia for sharing her books on Instagram, because that shows me that she has written a middle grade before. There's a sequel to this book, which is really exciting. And Tracy Badua writes middle grade and YA. So yes, this is not their debut. They just co-wrote this book together. And while I'm here, I also want to mention the queerness in this book because I forgot to even mention it in my vlog. There is a character who has two dads and there are side characters who are sapphic and it's really cute. I enjoyed it, especially that the ending was happy because I had thought it would go in a different way, but maybe I just have been reading too many sad stories <laughs> and just dark stuff. So this was a great palette cleanser as I was reading some dark things. I really enjoyed this one. And the last book for that vlog was an anthology, Queer Little Nightmares, an anthology of monstrous fiction and poetry edited by David Lee and Daniel Zamparelli. I enjoyed this. As any anthology goes, this wasn't perfect in my opinion. There were some that I liked, some that I didn't. And in that vlog, I highlight the ones that I really enjoyed and my problems with some of the stories. I did like that it had poetry because I don't see that a lot in anthologies. Usually it's just short story after short story so having the poetry to break up the stories actually was really nice. I read the majority of this on audio because I had bought the audiobook about a year ago on Libro FM. I like to read poetry physically, so when I heard that it was going to have poetry in it, I snagged a copy. But overall, I enjoyed this. There were some stories that I liked, some that I didn't, and I think this is good if you want to read some monstrous fiction. It's a good way to be exposed to more queer and BIPOC authors because I only knew two of the authors in this, so it was really nice to be exposed to more authors. And that's everything I've read lately. Let me know in the comments what you've been reading lately or any of your thoughts on the books I've mentioned. And if you don't feel like leaving a lengthy comment, you can leave a book emoji so I know that you stayed. I would also love to have your input on my wrap-ups for the end of the year. Would you rather have individual wrap-ups or just a recent reads to start the year? I feel like that might be the move, but I'm not sure because it depends on how much I read. I know it doesn't really matter, but if I only read like three books in a month, I don't really feel like making a whole video on it, especially because I'm usually reading for vlogs. So let me know if you would rather individual wrap-ups, November wrap-up, a December wrap-up. I am somebody who reads until the very last second of the year. December 31st, I am reading until the very last second. <laughs> So I am not somebody that's going to do an early December wrap up because I never know what's going to happen. So hopefully we can figure this all out together because I'm not sure what I'm going to do. It really depends on how much I read, but I would love to know if you would rather have individual wrap ups, a November wrap up and a December wrap up or just a recent reads to start out 2025. Would love to know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Alex. This is Books and Paperbacks, where I love to share about queer and trans books. So if that's something you're into, feel free to hit subscribe. I would love to have you a part of the paperback payouts. Thanks so much to my patrons for their continuous support of this channel. And if you would like to support the channel further, I have my Patreon and coffee, which are being used as tip jars at the moment. And if you're looking for something else to watch, here is a video that YouTube recommends. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video very soon.